Okay. Um, good evening. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone. I would like to greet everyone in the wonderful name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and hoping that everyone had a wonderful day and that uh, everyone was blessed throughout the day. And we'd like to thank the Lord for 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 His mercies and for uh, being kept safe up until um, this time. We have been going through a lot, losing loved ones, but uh, we are still standing because the Lord has kept us safe. We are about to start our program. This is a series that has been running for the past uh, three weeks. We are now uh, closing it off. Before we start then, we will ask our elder, Elder Artie, to kindly open this program for us. And then after that, I'll just lay out the program, how it's going to, to, to be like, and then we are going to start immediately after that. Elder Ati, if you can hear me, and if you can unmute yourself, please open with a word of prayer for us, my elder. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day you've given us. Thank you for having kept us uh, since the last time we met. A lot has happened just in the few days since we last met. Uh, some of us have lost their loved ones and uh, many things have changed that have disrupted our lives, but we are still standing and we are eternally grateful for that. We ask that you be with us as we are about to get into this evening's uh, service and this evening's message. We pray for your Holy Spirit to speak to us in a special way this evening as we wrap up the power series that you've blessed us with the past few weeks. We ask that in a special way, you may use the speaker and uh, may you continue to bless him in his ministry and uh, may he decrease and may you increase as we uh, wait to hear uh, what you have to say to us this evening. We pray that you prepare our hearts so that um, they might be receptive to your word and that we might be drawn closer to you uh, as we prepare for your soon coming. We thank you and ask all of this in the loving name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Um, thank you. Thank you, my elder. Uh, again, greetings to everyone who has, who has joined us. And as I had said, we have been having this power series that we started three weeks uh, three weeks ago, and and um, sorry about that. And our power series was based on the book of chapter John, uh, John chapter nineteen verses 18 which was then saying and there they crucified him we have heard the first speaker who was um, uh, talking about there and then the second speaker was then explaining the first speaker was explaining to us of the location the second speaker then explained um, um, they who are they and then last week we were focusing on crucified and today we will be focusing on the last part of the verse, which is him. Who is the him that we are talking about? And we are having Brother Ashley, Brother Ashley, who is then going to be explaining to us about the him that is uh, the last part of our series. Uh, I can see that he is here. I'm going to give over to him so that we can hear the Lord talking to us and um using Brother Ashley to actually bring the word of God to us and explain what is entailed in, in the book of uh, John chapter 19, verses 18. And the last part, that is him. Uh, over to you, my brother, if you can hear me. Uh, my elder, thank you so much. Uh, I do apologize for uh, running late, and I greet the saints of God in the mighty name of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, it's really, really, really good to be here, uh, the opportunity to share the word uh, with you. 
and and thank you so much for 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 that background that you've just given uh, and as my my good friends have been sharing in the past weeks we had um uh, Oprah boys was here Tandazo uh was here uh and Ukuku as well they were here sharing some powerful powerful messages from the book of John uh as you've already quoted it the book of John chapter 19 uh, and the verse is number 18. It says that where they crucified him, where they crucified him, and that is where uh, he touched on, where they crucified him. And then the second part uh, then says, um, and uh, two others with him, two others were with him. Um, and then it says on either side, it was one, and Jesus in the midst, Jesus in the midst. And today I'm going to be focusing uh, on the him, where they crucified him. Um, and then there where he then says even two others were with him. And then finally, it is that man, Jesus Christ, that I'm going to be speaking about where it says, and Jesus uh, in the midst. Uh, allow me to submit to you, uh, my good friends, that uh, the epitome of voidness is living a full life in the absence of Jesus Christ. Uh, it's just a facade that we put across. It may seem as though you are complete, but the fact of the matter is that if Christ is not within you and is not involved in the nitty gritties uh, of your life, no matter how it may seem as though you are complete, the truth of the matter is that you are living a life that is void. Uh, you are living a life that has a space that can only be filled by somebody that you are rejecting. And essentially, I'm speaking to those who have blatantly uh, and outright um, rejected uh, Jesus Christ as being a part of their lives. Uh, the Bible says that uh, a fool says in his heart that there is no God. Uh, and to tell you something about fools, you never know that you are a fool until sanity begins to reign. So you don't realize your foolishness until you come out of it. The madman that is walking in the street, when he looks at all others, he thinks that they are the mad ones because something is not right in his brain. And you may not realize it, but you may appear as though you are complete and you are full. But so long as Jesus Christ is absent in your life, then you are living an empty life. That being said, that is the introduction and I'm going to invite you uh, for a short word of prayer. Close your eyes and bow your head with me as we pray. Dear Heavenly Father, as we dwell deeper into your word right now, dear Father, we pray for the spirit of enlightenment. We pray, dear God, uh, for your Holy Spirit to be able to uh, well articulate those things that he wants us to know this evening, dear Father. May you speak to us in a special way and may, be, may we be well acquainted uh, with who you are, dear Father, as an individual, uh, or rather as a super being. At the end of this discourse, dear Father, may we say that we have gone closer and closer to you. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray, amen and amen. Now, the Bible says in the book of Revelation chapter uh, 14 from verse number six, uh, which is the verse that we um, preach a lot as Seventh-day Adventists, uh, the three angels' message. Uh, it says that, um, and I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth to every nation, kindred, tongue, and people, saying with a loud voice, fear God uh, and give him glory for the hour of his judgment is come. And then it says, and worship him, worship him. Who is this him that is being spoken about here? Is it the male people that we see on the platform? Because we see a lot of people worshiping their husbands. We see a lot of people worshiping their boyfriends. We see a lot of people worshiping their sons. Is that the hymn? And the answer is a straight out, no, that is not the hymn. When we speak about the hymn that is being spoken of then we are speaking about God himself. We are speaking about Jesus Christ himself, who is God. He is the one to, own, to whom all worship is due. And Lucifer has been trying and he's been trying very, very, very hard. Even when you go into the heart of the fourth commandment, which points the worship to this him who is uh, rightfully deserving of worship. 
Lucifer has been trying to get that worship away from him. And brothers and sisters, allow me to submit to you today that when we read the book of John chapter 19, verse number 18, and then it says where they crucified him, where they crucified him. The moment that you begin to speak about crucifixion, you have no option but to jump to the book of Isaiah chapter 53, where it says, who had believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before them as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. He had no form, no comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire of him. He is despised and rejected of man. A man that is acquainted with grief. Yet our sorrows were laid upon him. He was despised and he was rejected of man. Surely he had borne our griefs and our iniquities, yet we have esteemed him not. And then it goes on and it even says that the, 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 our sins were laid on him. And by his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray and each and every one of us has turned into their own way. But the Lord has seen it fit that our sins should, lay, should be laid on him. And that is what happened on Calvary. But let me tell you something about the Calvary experience, which many of us, by the way, we go through. A lot of us go through Calvary in one way or the other. Life is crucifying us on a daily basis. But let me tell you something. Whether you've got him or you don't have him, life is still going to crucify you. But I want to tell you something that, Calvary is a better place when he is in the midst of it. Your Calvary is a better place when Christ is in the middle. Now, you might be a thief, and I don't know what you have stolen or what life has stolen from you, but the day that you lay on Calvary, stand and look at who is in your midst. If Christ is not in the midst of your Calvary, Ah, uh, then I tell you something. Your Calvary is not worthy. Your Calvary is not worthy of climbing. When the musician writes and then they say, on the Via Dolorosa, which is the path that Jesus Christ walked on that day as he was going on onto Calvary, Via Dolorosa became a different place because Jesus Christ walked on it. Our problems become a different issue all together when Jesus Christ is in them. And I'll tell you something, you can take a problem, you can take any problem and it will be a problem, but take a problem and put Jesus into that problem. And I will tell you, your problem will become a glorified and a holy problem. Why? Because Jesus Christ is in the midst. It's all about Jesus Christ. It's always been, it's always been about Jesus Christ. That is why when Paul writes in the book of Acts chapter 4, verses 12, he says, neither is the salvation in any other, for there is no other name given amongst men where we must be saved except the name of Jesus Christ. So if it's not about Jesus in your life, then you ought to worry. No, and everybody is looking for solutions. Everybody is running to and fro. What I want, give me Jesus. Give me my God. Now, I don't care what the world is going to say. You know, these days, the, 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 the Bible says that a fool says in his heart, there is no God. That is what the Bible says. But today, it is those that are without God that are telling us that we are fools. Hello? So they look at us. And then they see us serving our God. And then they say, no, no, he can't be an intelligent lawyer. But, but how so? He believes in Jesus Christ. He believes in God. He, 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 no, that, that, guy, that, that guy can't be a proper doctor. Cannot be that like, ask Dr. Ben Carson, as he was running for president, they were telling the men that, that this man, he seems to be on the right path, but we have to question his intelligence. And then they say, but this man was the first to separate two conjoined twins. This man has written numerous articles. This man has published in many journals. 
This man has saved many lives that were on the brink of death. How dare you question his Christianity? On what basis do you question his Christianity? And then they say, how dare do you question his intelligence rather? And then they come and say, he cannot be intelligent and believe that there is a God. The fools are telling us that we are the foolish ones. And many of you, I even for some of you, you don't even know where you stand. Your Christianity is drowning. Your Christianity has not taken life swimming lessons. Your, your Christianity has no standing. Your, your, your Christianity is that's what they would say in modern day language. Why? Because the fools have convinced you that you are a fool. When you are the most intelligent of them all, the fools have, have, have convinced you that you are the fool. And I love Paul when he writes in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 25, and he begins to write about our God. And he says that in his foolishness, God is wiser than all of us. I'd rather be called a fool and be in the arms of those, of that man who is wiser than them all in his foolishness. In his weakness, God is stronger than all of us. So you are dwelling in the midst of strength and yet you are getting somebody who is right at the bottom of weakness and they are convincing you that you are weak. Poor Christian, I feel sorry for you. Shame, shame on Christians without a backbone. Shame on Christians that are compromising on a daily basis. Shame on Christians that cannot stand up for the him. They can't stand up for their God because they're afraid that they're gonna be looked at down. Shame on you. How many of you are able to stand uprightly in this day and age? And I know that there's many young people on this platform. How many of you are ashamed of the gospel? How many of you can stand and say, I believe in him? And then they say to you, have you seen him? And you say, no, I've never seen him. Have you touched him? No, I've never touched him. Then on what basis do you believe in him that you have not seen? How many of you will still be able to stand and say, yes, I still believe? Hey, I'm tempted to stand, but there's no pulpit. How many of you are able to stand firm in the faith of your God? There in the midst of Calvary was Jesus Christ. Ha! The one thief looks and says, if you are Jesus Christ, take us down. The other thief looks and he says, remember me when you enter into paradise. Jesus Christ says, wait a minute. Have you ever been into paradise? And the thief says, no, I've never been. If I were to give you right now a blank page and say, draw paradise, Will you be able to draw paradise for me? And he says, no, I'll never be able to draw paradise. So on what basis are you asking me for that which you have not seen? And he says, I have not seen, but I have had faith coming by hearing and hearing the word of God. There is power in the word. There is power in the name of Jesus Christ. When his name is mentioned, even the demons begin to tremble. Demons tremble at the mention of a name of somebody that is not physically present so that they can see him with the naked eye. Demons, they shake. And yet you, as a man of flesh, it says in the book of Hebrews that the angels were created a little higher than the human beings. Those that are higher, they shake and they tremble at his name. And yet you, when you stand here, you fear man more than you fear the Christ. You fear elderly people more than you fear the Christ. You can't even sleep at night with your lights off because you fear the dead more than him that lives it. Shame on you, Christians. Shame on you, Christians. Today I want to preach the hymn, the hymn that they laid to bed on that day and they thought it was done and over with. But I tell you, day three came. Day three came and he resurrected. Young people, I am preaching the living Savior. I'm preaching the resurrected Jesus Christ, the powerful Messiah. When Stephen was being stoned in the book of Acts chapter seven and they thought they had him. And then he said, I looked up into the heavens and lo and behold, I saw Christ by the right hand of the father. There is comfort as Stephen was being stoned. And I don't know what stones are being put on you. And you think that there is comfort in rejecting him. Your only sense of comfort is in acknowledging him. It is all about him. It is all about Jesus Christ.
That is why when John writes in the book of John chapter 5, verse 39, and Jesus Christ himself is speaking in John 5, verse 39, by the way, in case you didn't know. And he says that, set ye the scriptures. For in them you think you have eternal life, and these are they which testify of me. That is Jesus Christ speaking. And that is why when the preacher man decides to be fancy, he'll say, go and search the scriptures. You start in Genesis, he is Shalom. In Exodus, he is the I am. In Numbers, he is the star and scepter. In Deuteronomy, he is the rock. In Joshua, he is the captain of the Lord's host. Some in, in the book of Job, he says, for I know my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand in the latter day. When you go into the book of Psalm, he is the shepherd. Zechariah says that he is the branch. When you go into Micah, he says that he is the one whose way forth is of old. He is from everlasting to everlasting. When you go into the book of Malachi, he says that he is the messenger of the covenant when you go into the new testament four personal biographies matthew says that he is savior mark says he is the son of god luke says he is the great physician john says he is the word that is made flesh Ed says he is the one that empowers you and me to go and spread the three angels message when you go into the book of philippians he says that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that jesus christ is lord to the glory of god the father thessalonians says to those of you who are in covid and you are burying your loved ones left right and center he says that he shall descend with a shout and at his command all the grace shall pop like popcorns and those that died in christ they shall resurrect to be caught up to meet him in the sky hebrew says that we have a great high priest who is touched with the feelings of our infirmities in all points tempted like you and me and yet without any fault or blemish jude says that he is able to keep you and me from falling and to present us in the sight of a holy god as though we have never seen when you go into the book of revelation he says that i was in the spirit on the lord's day and i saw him high and lifted up he is the alpha he is the omega he is the beginning and he is the ending the everlasting god the one that is coming to save you and me how dare you reject him yeah. how dare you get the world to convince you to lose faith in the son of man where else is your salvation gonna come from where else is your salvation going to come from? When David says in the book of Psalm, chapter 121, I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord. The Lord which made the heaven and the earth, he will not cause thy feet to be moved. He will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade upon your right hand. The sun is not going to smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will preserve you. The Lord will preserve your going forth and your coming in from henceforth until forevermore. When we are singing that song, what song are you singing if you are rejecting Jesus Christ? Which hymn, which hymn is this that you are holding on to? Some of you, you are holding on to hymns that are very weak. Some of you have faith in boyfriends that you have faith in the living father. That is why when Hebrews writes, it says that furthermore, we have had fathers of our own flesh, which gave us correction and we took heed. Shall we not much rather be subject to the father of spirit and live? Hey, some of you have faith in men without salaries. Sisters, holding on. No, I have faith. No, no, he has a vision. He has a vision, no, I'm, I'm gonna hold on to him. You're holding on to a man, you're even feeding him. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. I'm saying if you can do it with a man of flesh that dies, a man of flesh that can cheat on you, a man of flesh that will leave you and date a yellow bone and leave you as though you never held on to him. Why can't you do it with God? Hello? Some of you, you fear bosses and employers more than the him that dwells in thrones that are about. Lack of faith, Bazalwan. Oh, may God help our faith, young people. May God help our faith. The man stood on Calvary and he died for you and me. It's all about him. It's all about him. You've got questions that you need to be answered. Go to him. You've got problems that are threatening you. Go to him. You've got demons that are bothering you. Go to him. You've got demonic agencies and, 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 and generational curses that live within you. Don't look up to pastors. Don't look up to elders. Don't look up to demons. Look up to him. Only Christ is able to deliver us. Only Jesus Christ is able to save us. For there is no 
other name given amongst men wherewith we are going to be saved except the name of Jesus Christ. The world is slowly but surely reaching its final phases. And I'm telling you, the end question at the final day will be, do you know him? And I, I hope and I pray that on that day, I might be able to say, yes, I know him. And I pray that on that day, you will also be able to stand and say, yes, I know him. For it is only through him that you and I will be able to experience a life better than the one that the devil has taken away from us. May God bless you. May God keep you. May God preserve you. And may you have more faith in him. Our eyes are closed and we are praying. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your loving kindness and mercy. We are eternally grateful for this opportunity that you've given us. You are reminding us, dear Father, that you are still there for us. The world, dear Father, is shaking our faith. Second Peter chapter 3, verses 8, dear Father, says that the scoffers will come in into our midst. Or oh, if only the writer knew that they have started now coming in into our midst. They are asking us, where is the promise of your second coming? They are planting doubt, dear Father. Some of them are ministers, dear God, ministers that once stood for the gospel. Today they are questioning our faith, dear Father. They are making us to falter, dear Father. We are even doubting you, dear God. And I pray that if there is anybody on this platform that was beginning to doubt your power, that was beginning to doubt your existence, that was beginning, beginning to doubt your presence, oh dear Father, how that you might impress them this evening to continue holding on to you, dear Father. You say, behold, I come. Hold fast that which you have, lest no man take it away from you. Oh, the devil, dear father, clothed, dear father, in garments of men. The devil, dear father, masquerading as brothers and sisters, masquerading as a man of flesh, is wanting to take away our blessed hope, dear God. Oh, how I pray this evening that you might not allow him, dear God. There are many young people on this platform. They are battling with all sorts of things, dear father. We are battling, dear Father, with sins of pride. We are battling, dear Father, with sins of, 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 of flesh, dear Father. Many of us are battling, dear Father. We've got young people here, dear God, who are battling with so many things that have taken hold of them, dear Father. Things that we cannot even dare mention, dear Father, lest the other brethren fall in our midst, dear Father. And we say, please release us from those demonic agencies. Please release us from those forces, dear Father, which have taken control of our lives. Release us, dear Father, this evening. We pray for strength. We pray that Jesus Christ must, might dwell within us, dear Father, so that we might shun the world, dear God. Please, dear God, hear our prayer as young people, dear God. We don't want to lose you, dear God. We don't want to lose the joy of spending eternity with you, dear God. And we plead with you this evening, dear God. May you win us back, dear Father. We are that sheep that has gone astray, dear God. And we pray, dear God, that when the shepherd has come, dear Father, to take us back home, let it not be, dear God, that when he stands and knocks at our doors, that we will not open, dear God. We are struggling with alcohol. We are struggling with cigarettes. We are struggling with things of flesh, dear Father. We are struggling with party lives, dear God. We are struggling with the spirit of rebellion, dear Father. We are struggling with the spirit, dear Father, of rejecting our own parents, dear Father. We are ashamed of our own upbringings, dear Father. And we are creating, dear Father, a life, dear Father, in the world that seems to be perfect. But inwardly, dear Father, we are dying. Our Instagram says that we are living the perfect life, dear Father. Our WhatsApp comments and statuses are saying that we have lifestyles that everybody should be looking up to. But you know, dear God, that we are dying. Save us. Save us in the name of Jesus Christ. Give us, dear Father, today, Jesus Christ. That sacrifice on Calvary, we refuse that it be a sacrifice in vain. We commit, dear Father, to salvation. This evening, we commit to salvation. We hold on to Calvary. And we say, come what, come may. We are going to be saved, dear God. We refuse that the devil, dear God, is going to win us. After all, dear Father, that Christ has been through with us, we refuse, dear Father. Save us. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Hear now our prayer. Amen and amen. 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 Um, thank you. Thank you, Brother Ashley. We would like to thank the Lord for using you and delivering the message. We then um, coming to the end of our program, and we hope and pray 
that everyone was blessed and may we have a blessed uh, week ahead of us the rest of the week up until we meet again and I am for sure revived. Uh, for those who would love to watch this uh, sermon again, it is available on, it will be available on YouTube on Oak in Randbeck. May we all be blessed and may we have a blessed night. In Jesus' name, amen.